and the this is your presentation. Uh, uh, I'll introduce so, it. Uh, it's yeah. Where is it? It's not the yeah. Uh, there's no one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, Hello. <laughs> Hello. Ah. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Uh, so our next presenter is Corinne Delio uh, from uh, the British Library uh, to talk about who's using our linked data in their project. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so uh, I'm collection metadata analyst at British Library, and as you can see, there was more than one person involved in the project. Unfortunately, Luca and Pierre-Yves, who are the developers who developed the platform, couldn't be here. So I hope I do uh, justice to their, to their work. So this is what I'd like to uh, talk about, the, give you some context about, you know, uh, well, Osmo has already mentioned um, very briefly uh, the link to OpenBNB. Um, what the collaboration between the British Library and Fujitsu was in building this RDF analytics platform, and give you a few highlights of what we learned about the usage of the, the BNB, and what uh, we think the value of RDF analytics has been for us. Um, so the British Library was uh, created in 1973 um, um, by uh, a, a Brit the British Library Act, and uh, in that act, the, the, our role is defined as being the National Centre for Bibliographic and Other Information Services. Um, so originally, uh, a lot of those, well, many of those uh, bibliographic services were priced. Uh, but more recently, uh, we've been uh, offering open data, and that's partly because of the uh, uh, impetus um, uh, of the um, UK government, which is pushing public sector institutions uh, into publishing their uh, public data as open data. And so the linked open BNB uh, is just one offering uh, and part of our strategy um, which we published in uh, 2015. So when we, we were looking at publishing uh, linked open data, we, we decided to uh, publish the British National Bibliography. So it's, uh, it's, it's about 3.7 million records uh, representing uh, pu publication published in Ireland, in the Republic of Ireland and the UK on all subjects, in all languages, and from 1950 to the, the present, uh, present day. We decided to pick that um, um, data set because, uh, well, it's, it's part of our core function as a national library to, to produce the British National Bibliography. We thought it would be a, a reu reusable uh, data set because it's not a unique institu institu institutional catalog. Uh, we also um, were able to um, publish it uh, under CC0 because we either create the metadata or if we don't create it ourselves, we've secured the right uh, to distribute it in perpetuity. Um, it also includes things with a capital T of uh, interest, people, places, date, subjects, and it's also consistent. Um, and as consistent as a mark, data set can be over 60 years, so it, it uh, it is uh, relative, it is well maintained, it's authority control, we've got DUA in there, we've got LCSH, but we also have to, to bear in mind that um, over the years, over 60, over 60 years, we've changed policy, we've changed cataloging standards from ACR, ACR to 2RDA, we've also changed formats because we used to, uh, it used to be in UK mark and in 2004 we published in, uh, we moved over, over to Mark 21. So it's as consistent as can be. So I'm not talking about the data model. I mean, Osma put it on his uh, graph, um, on his diagram. Um, but what is available as the linked open BAB is a subset of the uh, overall data set. We've got a book uh, data set and a serial one um, available on the linked data platform. So you've got a few links there. 
The data is uh, hosted uh, externally. We haven't got internal capacity at the moment. We've got, you've got a Sparkle endpoint, a Sparkle editor, and we also make uh, bulk downloads available into serialization in RDFXML and in eight triples, and this is updated monthly. So, some challenges, not all of them, <laughs> I'm only dealing with those that are more pertinent to uh, the usage, the use of our data. Well, first, um, resources, both human and financial. Um, I think uh, the British Library, like many UK public sector institutions, is, is, is continuing to face a uh, very uh, challenging um, si uh, uh, situation. So, to give you an example, from 2010 to 2015, the, the library um, has lost 30% of its budget and 23% of its staff. So we must really know, is it worth continuing to provide this service? Uh, where should we focus our efforts? Um, there, are, there is less and less money, and there's, the library is, is very, has a very ambitious program, so there's more competition for funds. We also get uh, limited user feedback, so I think that's not a, a problem unique to the, the British Library. I think it's the experience of many um, linked open data uh, publishers. Uh, and I'll talk about uh, uh, the kind of uh, feedback we get uh, a bit later. So we, need, we really need to know who uses our, our data and what for and how best we can, can we support those users. Uh, and an another challenge is that there's a kind of lack of linked data specific analytics tool, or as far as we're, we're aware anyway. Um, and there's another perspective to that is that um, we, it's not just any tool that we, we were after, we were looking for to, but also some uh, user friendly <laughs> uh, tool because at the library we, we are mainly, principally, uh, metadata librarians. We're not linked data specialists, really, so we really need some user-friendly tools with um, um, you know, good visualizations. So this is the way we, uh, how do we currently monitor the BNB data uses? So we have, we keep, some basic statistics, so the number of hits against the Sparkle endpoint, the number of downloads from the British Library webpage, and we get some basic uh, web logs analysis report, but there's a lot of work required at the moment to extract information. So a lot of the um, um, information we get about the, the data usage is kind of anecdotal or, I mean, we know it's been used in pilot project because we've, we've ourselves given the data. So it's been used in a, as test data for a semantic search demonstrator, and also we, we gave it to Microsoft to, for them to work on one of their projects. We know it's been used in tutorials. For example, Owen Stevens, which I'm sure some of you know, has done a, a tutorial about an API. Uh, it might get tweeted. Uh, people, uh, people do something about it and, and tweet about it. Or rare, more rarely, but it does happen, that people contact us and say, I've used your data, thank you very much. And, you know, this, this is great work. Um, so we were after something, we had all these questions about who is using our data and which data, how to do it, when um, Fujitsu um, were on their part wanting to have some test data to be able to develop the, the tool. Uh, so we gave um, 13 months worth of uh, web logs and also we provided feedback on the um, on the interface and and you know, to try and make it to improve the functionality and the user experience. For just two very graciously gave um, their time and experience um, to develop that, that tool. Um, and I also have to add that they developed it with uh, other web logs. They had five, five years worth of uh, um, the French chapter of DBpedia. So um, I was mentioning the, the, the I mean, the, 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 this tool um, incorporates some um, features that traditional web analytics tool have, for example, location and network provider, but it has some distinctive features, for example, some Spark specific, Sparkle specific metrics. It, for example, counts the different types, returns the different types, you know, ask, 
describe, etc. It provides some fine-grained analytics for each category of RZF resources, so it, it counts the number of instances and tells you which one they are, classes, properties, and graphs. It supports three of the three of three patterns, so RDF dereferencing. It also detects visitor sessions and give you some idea about the depth and length of those uh, sessions. It also attempts to uh, classify Sparkle queries and their complex complexity, whether they're light or heavy. And uh, it also tries to um, um, classify the visits to see whether they're done by humans or machines. So this is what the system looks overall. Uh, so the logs are um, processed. The first thing that happens is that the, um, all the access information from uh, robots and search engine crawlers are uh, filtered out because they provide some noise, so we are left with quote-unquote genuine queries. Um, the, metric, the traffic metrics are extracted, they are uh, stored in this data warehouse whereby they can be uh, queried via a web user interface. So this, this is what the web user interface looks like. You're welcomed by a, a, an overview dashboard um, that you can uh, customize. So at the top, you've got the protocol. You can either see the overview or select whether you want to see Sparkle or HTTP dereferencing. De you can also select your user agent. So you can decide whether you want to see just browsers, mobile browsers, uh, or software libraries. And you can um, uh, customize the, the, the date span. So uh, you can have a look at the whole year, or you can just go down to a day if you want. And on the left-hand side, you have the metrics, uh, the request counts, the response codes, uh, and the audience uh, metrics looking at location, uh, user agents, the types of visitors and sessions, and uh, looking at the, the protocol, what data access they've, they've, um, visitors have been using. So what did we learn? So out of, so on thir uh, 13 months, so from March 2014, we're looking at March 2014 to April 2015, um, most of the uh, requests were the result of search engine crawlers, I mean, or um, some robot activity. So about 47.43.7 uh, million requests. So we're left with 252,000 252, uh, that we were kept. Overall, we can see that the, the, the request flow is stable overall, and there's been even a slight increase because we start with 18,000 requests uh, uh, and moving on to 24,000. And within that uh, uh, time frame, the number of Sparkle queries in increased from 67 in, uh, in March to about um, ele just over 11,000. We've got new users coming in all the time, but what we also see is that there's a bounce rate of 48%, which means that users come in, but they only, have a, they only look up one single resource, and then they, they look away, they go away. So uh, we need to um, uh, have some retention strategy to make sure that they just uh, stay longer and explore um, the system and the data. So we, I mentioned before that there'd been tutorials, and so we, we had an idea that um, the users, some, quite a lot of the users were novice users using the, the Sparkle endpoint as an edu educational tool. And that's, that's confirmed when we looked at uh, the top five in instances. In the top five instances, we've got these two, and we know that The Hobbit was uh, set as an example by a tutorial by, uh, done by Lee Dodds, and the uh, Lewis example is based on, um, we've got on our documentation a Sparkle query using that, so people are obviously um, using, um, f following that. And it, if we look at the top, the top five classes, um, out of those top five, there are uh, three that do not exist in the da data, or even do not exist <laughs> at all. So the second one, there is no Bibo author, as far as I know. Um, it, the, in the ontology uh, 
bio, bio, no, you say it, birth exists as a class, but you see there's an issue of capitalization. This is a, uh, and we do not have, we haven't got, we haven't created an author as part of our classes. <coughs> Contrasting that to properties, the top five properties are spot on, and we can see that people search by ISBN title, uh, the type of resource, uh, the label, and the creator. So I'm not sure um, that you know we have to look at what's, or maybe do some more um, documentation uh, about uh, what's what's the problem with classes. Is it to do a generic uh, misunderstanding, or is it to do with our data model? Location, so we can see that um, uh, the USA come top, then the UK and Germany. And when you look at user, user categories, we can get a breakdown via academia. So Karlsruhe there, I don't know if it's anybody from there, but you've been busy. And also by government. So overall, there are 350 academic and government organization uh, using the data set. Finally, if I look at access, we've got Sparkle queries account for 29% uh, of total requests. Direct human access for 62% of total requests. And um, desktop browsers are the most popular, 54%. But what we no notice also is there's a sharp increase in requests from software libraries, but 95 times more from the beginning to the end. Um, so we can see that there's a, there's a kind of uh, evolving um, use, we, we seem to have gone from uh, a more manual human browsing of HTTP, uh, thanks to the, the dereferencing, de 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 through to um, more machine access via software libraries. So if we look again, and if we look that's at the software libraries, we can see they've got bigger, deeper, and longer sessions. They look up more resources. The depth is... Uh, bigger than if you compare that with um, browsers. So this seems to be, from the beginning to the end, uh, an evolution from the site being used as an experimental tool to the data to maybe a more an ecosystem developing of more mature applications. So to conclude, as we were hoping, we get a better um, understanding of how the data is used um, at a greater levels of granularity and with more user-friendly uh, visualization. Uh, it helps us to support the business case, to be able to continue to provide this service, and also it's going to help us to work out where we need to develop documentation or support the users. What it's also done as well is it's informed the dialogue we have with the existing platform uh, provider. It's given us the evidence and the confidence to ask more questions. And it's also informed the tender specification, which we um, have now awarded to the same uh, provider, which is TSO. But we, we are um, going to get a dashboard, maybe not as uh, with all the bells and whistles that this one has, but we are going to get a better uh, management information. So I'll just finish with this slide, which gives you a few links. And the, the one at the top is a, a demo. If you want to have a, a, a look at that, there's one month's worth of, um, of data there. Uh, if you want to uh, discuss any of this, we've got the, an email address. But if you want to talk about the system itself, then I would recommend you talk to Luca at Fujitsu Island. And um, again, um, more details about our other open data, where you can download the data, and you're, if, you're, if you're an insomniac, I would really recommend the collection metadata strategy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So uh, again, we have some time for questions. I'm sure we must have many again. Someone have a question for? I think you've done a, a, an impressive job of, of uh, collecting evidence and, and analytics in a very difficult environment that probably many of us can relate to. Um, so I'm uh, wondering what your sense is now in terms of, you mentioned that uh, there is a case for service continuity, but what are your, uh, what do you, how, do you, how do you think things will be progressing? Well, um, um, yes, I mean, we have retended and we are going to continue providing the service. I mean, we are hoping to develop 
the BNB because, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, there's um, uh, it's only a, subs uh, a subset. So we we are hoping to um, output in the first quarter of 2017 um, the forthcoming publication data set, and and uh, that's going to be the opportunity to review the documentation and try to address some of those issues. I mean, I mentioned the fact that. Um, uh, we needed, you know, there was an issue with classes. There's also very few people searching. We've got two graphs, and nobody searches by graph. And I haven't got that in my documentation. So maybe, you know, um, the, the fact that the data and the, all the um, access is done by um, novice users, if that's the case, as an education tool, that's that's great. I mean, we have a function of the National Library of Public Good, so it's all, you know. It, it's fine. So, um, yeah, next step is more data and then um, um, better documentation, which uh, rings a bell with the uh, keynote that there was this morning. <laughs> That's one of the outcomes. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Yes. Oh. Thank you very much for this really interesting talk. Um, can you elaborate a bit more on uh, so the libraries and software you used for this Sparkle query log analysis? And uh, particularly uh, if there are parts which are open and can be reused by, by others who drive Sparkle endpoints? You're asking, sorry, you're asking about the tool? And whether it can be reused? Uh, so, so software for analyzing the, log, the Sparkle log files. Uh -huh. uh, for example, detecting heavyweight and lightweight yeah. queries and yeah. things like this. Well, I mean, at the moment, it's the, this is a research prototype uh, prototyped, uh, developed by Fujitsu. So it's not open source. So in terms of reusing the, the actual software, then you'd have to talk to Luca, I think. I think we have time for one more question before we move on. Last chance. Ah. Uh, this is a very minor one, but what happened in October and also in August? <laughs> What's in yeah, because the, all the all the charts had these huge, huge bumps I there. Got, so you're asking me to remember what happened in October 2015 or 14? No, I was I was I was mostly thinking that did you have some some publicity yeah. uh, thing there or or, or <laughs> did you did you uh, yes, or, or or did someone someone decide to use your services and did it in a in a sort of non-neat way or something like that. Well, yeah, I'm getting there. So you can see uh, peaks and troughs. And so some of them has, have been linked to either when we've um, improved the data and done some publicity around it. So for example, when we've uh, put ISNI in the data, uh, or when the, uh, you know, the BNB has been mentioned at, uh, an, at a linked data event. So there was a, in uh, August 2014, there was an IFLA day at, um, on the data in Paris. So, and possibly if I look after, <laughs> after today, there'll be a, a, a peak there. So, I mean, some of those peaks are also due, there's, there's been some uh, people hitting the, the sparkle endpoint, uh, which means that we've had to put a, a, a threshold on the result size. Um, but um, yeah, some, some of it has been um, meant <laughs> and some has been has been people sort of writing a script and it's going to be pear-shaped. <laughs> thank you. So uh, join me again in thanking Celine for her presentation. Corinne, Corinne, Mike, Susan, Corinne. Corinne.